Hi, you may have heard of caged theory, uh, but not be too sure what it's all about. Uh, it's nothing to do with cages, it's to do with the C A G E D shapes on a guitar, so it spells the word caged. C A G E D. So, for this to make sense, you need to know those five chords, and it would help if you had a basic understanding of of the main bar chord shapes. So if you're familiar with those, this should all make sense. If you're not, I've made another video explaining about basic bar chords, so have a look at that. Okay, so what, what cage theory is, it's, it's where you can take those five shapes and use them anywhere on the neck to find any chord or any major chord that you happen to need at the time. And it saves moving around a lot. So the idea is that wherever you are, you might be here, for example, any, any major chords you're after, they, they can be found either right here or maybe one fret either side, but they won't be any further away than that. So a quick example, if I take an F chord, which is a good one to use as an example because it's not one of the five shapes. So it's not C, A, G, E or D. So I want to play an F chord using those five shapes. So I have to know where the F notes are on the guitar, or a lot of the F notes are on the guitar. Mainly this one and this one. Yeah, they're the main ones, but also it's handy if you know this one as well. So, if I go through the spelling, C is first. So I'll use this F note here and play a C shape bar chord. So I'm using the bar here because if I move this shape, C chord, up. It doesn't work like that. You have to replace the nut with your finger or a capo. Obviously for playing bar chords you need to use your finger rather than a capo. So this note's F, C shape with the bar. That's an F major chord. Another way of playing that. So the next one in the spelling of the word caged is A. So I can use this same F note, play an A shape with the bar. This is a shape you're hopefully familiar with. And that's also an F chord. So I've got C shape, A shape. And this reminds you that when you first learn chords down here, open chords, th those um, names that are given to those chords is only because you're in that position. As soon as you move somewhere else, you could use the same shape and it's no longer got that name. So a D is only a D when, you, when it's there. As soon as you move it, it's not a D anymore. But you think of it as a D shape. So we've played F chord in two places. C shape, A shape. So the next one's G. C, A, G, E, D. So I'm going to find an F on this string. There's one there. I'll play a G shape with the bar. This one's a little bit awkward. So that's G, G shape, but an F chord. Next one's E, so I need to do an E shape, but where there's an F note. So I could use this one again, but I'm going to go to a more comfortable position down here on that F. That's the E shape bar chord you're probably familiar with. So I've played C, A, G, E, all as F chords. The last one's D. So I'm going to use this F to form the D chord there. So it's a bit like a capo with the D chord. Uh, the other way you could do this one is take this note, which is also an F note. So that's also a root note of that chord. So when I play a D, I've got two root notes and I've got the open string here. That. And also got this. They're both D's. So anyway, you play this shape. You've got those two root notes there and there. So where I am there, that example would be G sharp or an A flat. So a quick example with more than one chord: uh, E flat to B flat. Okay, so nothing to do with. C, A, G, E, and D. So e flat, B flat. 
So I'll just play maybe here. Completely random position on the neck. So I want to find an E flat chord without moving too far. So my little finger's actually landed on an E flat note there, so that's quite handy. So I can think, okay, I'll do a G shape. That's an E flat major chord. That's E flat. The other one I said was B flat. So I've got to look for a B flat somewhere here. There's one there. So I could use the D shape. So I could play E flat like this. B flat like this. Now that might not seem that practical because they're both a little bit awkward to play. It gives you an alternative. And also, more importantly, when you're playing lead, often with more sort of advanced lead playing, you head for notes that are uh, within the chords that you're playing over. So if you know chords in lots of different places, even if they're a bit awkward to play like that, it, you don't necessarily have to use that as a chord shape, but if you know it's there, you can use the notes that are in it as part of a solo. notes that I know are going to fit with this because I'm mostly using notes that are actually in that chord and that was how uh, Jimi Hendrix for example would, would use caged system a lot in that way partly with his chords but mostly with his lead playing he may not have been thinking now I'm going to apply the caged theory it was probably a bit more instinctive and also just um, following where the shapes are without giving a name to it uh, and I learned this in the same way. I, I certainly played like this for years before I'd ever heard of caged theory. So it's a really useful thing. I hope that makes sense. If you like the video, please subscribe. And any questions at all, um, please feel free to put them below or get in touch with me. Okay, thanks.